You know how sometimes you go on YouTube because you need to watch one video, perhaps an educational video, and then boom, this happens. You get distracted by the bright colors and the big names like DJ Snake, PewDiePie, and then you find a cute cat video, and then there's a dog video, and in the end, you end up spending a couple of hours on YouTube. Has this ever happened to you? My point is not that you should stop watching dog or cat videos. My point is to show you that you can stretch the amount of time it takes to do something however you want. As I grew up in a life of busy schedules, I realized that the key to making time is not about finding it anywhere else but in the very things you're currently doing. And this is what I mean by the power of once. The power of getting your work done in such a way that doing it once is more than enough and you can therefore spend less time on your work. It is a philosophy which I came up with with time. It is a lifestyle and it's been working pretty well for me. So the power of once can be broken down into four simple steps which you yourself can easily integrate into your everyday life. Step one, put in your full energy and concentration into whatever you're doing. Have you ever wondered how sometimes people spend less time on the, their work but still produce the same results? During my time at Stanford, I observed that many students don't work as much as I expected them to. Strangely, they find enough time to get involved in clubs, to work on personal projects, to socialize, and still ace all of the tests. Geniuses, you might call them. Well, not really. There is a very simple explanation to that. When it's work time, there is no joke. What matters the most is not the amount of time put into your work. What matters the most is the intensity of focus into your work. And, let, so, and the power of once is about entering a state of such intense focus that you forget about anything and everything. Sleeping, eating, hopefully not breathing, and sometimes your own existence. And when you are in such a state, you are at your peak productivity level. Even if it's not a particularly enjoyable task, just like I hate cleaning my room, I would rather focus on it and try to get it done as fast as possible. So now some of you are probably thinking, yo, Jason, I already focus a lot on my work, but that doesn't mean I get to do my things any faster, to be honest. Well, that's where step two of the power of one comes in, which means you must want to do things in the right or smart way, thus reducing unnecessary time it takes to go back and do it again. Let's say you have a reading to do. You can either skim for it and come back to it later, possibly several times, or you can try to fully understand it from the first try so that you have to do it only once. Right and smart could thus mean getting quality work done faster, but it always means getting quality work done in such a way that it saves you time for the future. And this is how my family did it at home. We implemented AI and blockchain. Actually, I'm just kidding. This is my dog, Tyler. And as you can see, she is not just adorable, but she can also do laundry. And although it took quite some time to train her and give her those laundry skills, over time, the amount of time saved outweighs the amount of time put into training her once. Which means that certain work done once only, but in the right or smart way, enables you to do more in less. That is, you can save time for other activities in the future. So now we can move on to step three of the power of once, which means focusing on only one thing at a time. Try to remember the last time you felt overwhelmed by the amount of work you had. Wasn't it tempting to tackle two tasks or think about two tasks at the same time? And how well did that go? Even if you can't remember, that's all right, because we're going to try it out now. So for this small activity, you first got to clear up your throat. <coughs> and now what I'm going to ask you to do is to count up to 10. But before you start, I'll add in a small twist. You have to alternate between numbers and letters. So we'll go like 1, B, 3, D, and so on. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. 
So how many of you found this task hard? Okay, a decent amount. Now I'm going to ask you to do the exact same thing, but you can count in terms of numbers only. Ready? Go. Okay, good job. So how many of you found this task extremely hard? Yeah, I guess no one. Oh, one person, okay. So my point is that when you multitask, when you try to tackle different things at the same time, you unconsciously put some mental block that stands in between you and getting things done. This is why the power of ones tells you to do whatever you're doing wholeheartedly. Even if you're just spending time with family or friends, or just taking some time out for yourself, live in the moment. Because multitasking, like having lunch and working, or thinking about work at the same time, ends up taking more time and energy overall and makes you more stressed. So you'll be happy to avoid it. So now that we have all mastered those three steps, we can finally move on to step four, a very critical step. Procrastinate. Yes, I'm not even kidding. At Stanford, it is very, very common to hear things like, oh, my 2,000 words essay is during two hours, but you know what? I got plenty of time. I'm just chilling. And all of this might not make sense to you, it actually does. Because the power of wants through procrastination forces you to focus on your work and get it done right. Because, well, you have no choice. Hence, this is usually what happens. You automatically become more productive, and certain work, which you might have done over a week, can be done in one day only. Yet, do not pr procrastinate moderately so as not to compromise on the quality of work. Or even better, fake it. You can make as if your homework is due tomorrow, so that you'll do your best to get it done by tomorrow. And those small tricks, will not only help you become more productive, but more importantly, by not spending all your time doing work with hard deadlines, you can actually use that time to work on equally important or more important things with no deadlines. Working on ourselves, on our passions, on our relationships with people, for instance. Therefore, procrastinate not because you don't want to do it. Procrastinate because you still have time to work on non-urgent things. Personally, because I'm a big nerd, could I represent my school, you know? I procrastinate on my work by doing even more work. Please don't judge me. <laughs> well, I'm sure that most of us here are very busy people. And taking up those busy schedules requires more than our willpower, more than our ability to save small snippets of time throughout the day, and much more than our time management skills. It requires certain principles by which we live day by day. And the power of wants is all about those principles. With time, it is not so much of a conscious effort as it may sound. Instead, it is more of a natural way of doing things, a way of living that enables you to stretch and bend time to your own will in your life. And because you spend less time doing the exact same things in your schedule, ideally, Ideally, you can go from this, very busy, to this. Isn't that amazing? This is why I would encourage you to try it. Give your 100% concentration. Do it in the right and smart way. Focus on one thing at a time, and don't necessarily start on it until you have to. And the real beauty of a power of ones is that it is, in fact, just a cycle. A self-fulfilling cycle where each step feeds back to the next one and reinforces it. And once you enter the cycle, it just goes on and on. So maybe the next time you're sitting in a meeting, working on a group project, or having lunch with a friend, just pause for a second and think, are you just doing it or actually doing it? There is a whole world of difference. Thank you.